what's going on everybody this is island hopper tv and today we're going to show you the best things to do while visiting miami let's do it all right first up on the list here we are at bayside now i really like going down here because they have a variety of different restaurants and bars they also have a daiquiri bar you can get the ferry or a boat that goes out onto Biscayne Bay for a tour. Also, many different tours originate here. For example, the Big Bus, the Double Decker, you can also find that here, along with the Ferris wheel, which we'll be showing you later. Many visitors enjoy going to the Hard Rock Cafe right here at the edge of the Bayside. Also right next door is the actual Ferris wheel, and this is a cool place to go. It lights up at night. You can see it on Biscayne Bay, very colorful. It's a 12 to 15 minute ride, and it costs $17 for adults. Now here we are at the Big Bus Tour. You can get one of these for around $50 to $55, and it will take you all around Miami, everywhere from South Beach all the way to Little Havana. If it is your first time to Miami, this might be your best option. I would say take a day to do the Big Bus Tour and at least ride it for a few stops, maybe even do stop and go. It also stops at Wynwood. We'll be showing you all of those destinations soon. Also sitting on the top of the double-decker bus while you're going through the Port of Miami and seeing all of those amazing cruise ships is pretty cool. Speaking of the Port of Miami, you can see it from the big bus or you can actually arrive on one of these cruise ships or depart, which actually takes you into the Caribbean. So the Port of Miami is one of the largest cruise ship ports in the world. I was recently here and I saw the largest cruise ship in the world. It's called the Icon of the Seas. As you can see right here, it is huge. Now from the Port of Miami, we're actually headed to Miami Beach or South Beach as some people like to call it. Now down here, you're gonna have plenty of different restaurants, lots of nightlife, daytime activities right there on the beach. So a really beautiful place to hang out if you're looking for some sunshine, nightlife, entertainment. This is where to be, South Beach, Miami Beach. Most of you already know that. I was here in January and I was also here in February before. It can get cold down here, but on this day in January, there was people on the beach. So that tells you how warm Miami can be, but it also says it can get chilly down here. Now we're headed up north a bit. This here is Fort Lauderdale. That's about an hour away from Miami South Beach. People love Fort Lauderdale because of the beautiful beaches. They also have some canals with boats, water taxis. Do check out Las Olas Boulevard. Now here we are at the Florida Keys. So obviously you have Key Largo, which means long key in Spanish. Then you have Key West, which is the most famous one. You have several other keys like Esmeralda Key in between. And the keys are really amazing. People like to head down here in the winter time and just soak up all the sun. By the way, Key basically is an island, in case you were wondering. And another popular activity to do is rent a bike, ride a bike anywhere in South Florida. Very bike friendly, and when the weather is perfect, nothing better than a bike ride. Now we're gonna do an Everglades tour. So this is about an hour away from Miami. You can easily get a tour from your hotel accommodation, or by going down to Bayside, or just going on TripAdvisor, but getting out here to the Everglades, riding one of those hovercrafts, or just going out onto the bayou swamp area here, you will see alligators and other animals, in particular birds out here. Now, one of the most popular places for nightlife, as I talked about at Miami Beach, but in particular, Ocean Drive. So when you come down here to the South Beach area, Ocean Drive is where you wanna be. You can see all of the restaurants and pubs here. It is a bit expensive, so it's not for everyone. So maybe you just come down here, walk around, do some people watching, because if you're gonna eat at one of the restaurants, it seems to be about 20% more expensive than the rest of Miami. Also check out Collins Avenue. Now here we are at Wynwood. They have the Wynwood walls here. They also have an art museum. They have the Wynwood Marketplace. They have food opportunities with food trucks here. So Wynwood is an up and coming area. They say 10 to 15 years ago, it was a place you wouldn't have wanted to go, but over the last 10 years or so, they've really transformed this place and it's popular uh, for nightlife and for people who just wanna hang out on an afternoon and just be a part of a cultural area. So Wynwood, now this is the place to be. Check out Wynwood Marketplace and the food truck scene. I would say the Wynwood area is about 15 to 20 minutes away from downtown Miami, depending on traffic. So you can easily get here from downtown or the central part of Miami. If you do take the big bus tour, Wynwood is also part of one of those stops, so it makes it easy for you. 
just be ready to take a lot of pictures of all the street art. Now here we are at the Frost Science Museum. This museum has the aquarium, the Frost Planetarium, and if you want an adult ticket, it's $32.95. Youth ages 4 to 11 is $24.95. Children 3 and under are free. And it's really an exhibit for children, so if you're an adult with no kids, you may not want to go here, but if you do have the kids, this is definitely a place to add to your list. And then if you go right next door, you have the Perez Art Museum, which is another really interesting museum right in the same area. This one here is free. Now it may change depending on if they have an exhibition or some sort of exhibit, but to just go inside, you don't have to pay anything. So that's good news, right? The type of art you're gonna find here is mostly local artists who are trying to capture the culture and the feeling and the vibes of Miami. So you'll see that all across this museum. It is two levels, so don't miss the upstairs level while you're here. I would say spend around an hour or two here just walking around, relaxing and enjoying the free activity. When it comes to transportation, they do have the people mover here. It's not as popular as most cities' metro systems, although people still do use it and it can be convenient at times. All right, now let's head over towards downtown Miami, also known as Brickle. So this is the financial or the commercial center of downtown Miami. You're gonna notice they have many different restaurants, a really nice mall. Uh, I like to come down here in the evening time when it's not so hot, walk around and grab a bite to eat. Now we're here at the Miami River Walk. This is actually a nice walk that you can do, exercise, jog. Uh, this is a place where people do end up hanging out in the evening times, in the mornings. Uh, obviously in the afternoon in Miami, it gets very hot. You will see a lot of boat traffic headed out into Biscayne Bay. And here we are now at Biscaya Gardens. Now the Vizcaya Gardens is definitely one of my favorite botanical garden areas in all of Florida. So I highly recommend this place. Adult tickets are $25, children six to 12 are 10, and then children under five are free. If you get a chance, go out here. It's in between Coral Gables and downtown Miami. So it's not too far away from any of the hubs. Formerly known as Villa Vizcaya, it was actually developed by businessman James Deering and Deering McCormick, international harvester, fortune for those of you who are curious. Now it sits on Biscayne Bay and it's a Mediterranean style house. Uh, kind of reminds you of the Italian Renaissance gardens or just being there in the med right here in South Florida. The gardens are quite large and there's a lot of detail that went into building this place. Also the inside of the mansion is very good air conditioning by the way. So outside might be hot but inside the mansion beautiful uh, sights and very cool climate. So now here we are at Coco Walk right out here in Coral Gables. So the Coco Walk area is an outdoor mall but if you just walk around the outside of the mall you'll see there's plenty of restaurants and people out hanging out. Come down here on a weekend around 1 in the afternoon and you'll definitely find some action. It's the heart of Coral Gables I would say right here along Coconut Grove. Now here we are in Little Havana. Little Havana is probably one of the most famous places to hang out in all of Miami. And for good reason. Uh, when you come down here, you'll see lots of culture, lots of music. There's plenty of live bands playing even in the daytime. But nighttime is when this place really takes on a vibe of its own. But daytime around 12 o'clock starts off very nice as well. Although, like I said, sunset, really a good time to be down here, mostly because of the weather, but also because of the nightlife that you'll find here. If you wanted to try Cuban uh, style cigars, you're not gonna get the exact Cuban cigar, but you'll get Cuban style cigars because there's a lot of cigar shops. Uh, Cuban sandwiches, plenty of those around here, plenty of Cuban restaurants, lots of the Cuban music, and Cuban culture and people that makes you feel like you're in Cuba. Actually, after this, I always feel like I wanna go down to Cuba. One of my favorite things to do when I'm down here is get a haircut. Also, people like to take pictures with all of the street art, as you can see. The famous road down here is Calle Ocho. That's the 8th Street Road see the Cuban Walk of Fame and then Domino Park where people are playing dominoes into the afternoon and evening hours. 
And as we continue to show you around Miami, I want to give you guys some more information. But first, before I do that, I want to encourage you guys to subscribe to this channel, like the video if you enjoy content like this, as we continue to show you around Latin America. After all, Miami is considered the capital of Latin America, even though it's in the United States. Some things to consider when coming to Miami, take advantage of the amazing cuisine. Also, bring some nice clothes to get dressed up at night maybe do some dancing. Don't forget the beachwear though, because obviously many different beaches, but avoid eating out on Ocean Drive if you can, because you will save more money. It does get quite expensive down there. When it comes to transportation, I recommend using Uber or Lyft. I found that to be the best way to get around. Sure, you can rent a car, but after you factor in all of the costs with car rental, insurance, and then parking the vehicle in some congested areas, now here we are at Biscayne Key. Biscayne Key is more of a laid back type of beach. If you're looking for something a little bit different than South Beach or Miami Beach, I recommend coming down here. The beach isn't gonna be as good and there's not gonna be as much nightlife as there is on Ocean Drive, but it's still a very laid back experience. So if you're looking for a chilled beach right there in the south part of Miami, come on out here to Biscayne Key. And wherever you're at in Miami, water sports are going to be available, including out here on Biscayne Key. But if you go down towards South Beach, Biscayne Bay, you'll find water sport activities, jet skis, uh, paragliding, windsurfing, lots of activities going on. Also consider doing a Biscayne Bay tour. That's something you can get right down there in the waterfront area. But doing a tour around, you'll see some mansions. Uh, you can either do a daytime tour like a booze cruise or you can do the nighttime sunset tour both are equally good although the weather is going to be a bit more favorable for the sunset also near biscayne key is going to be the bill bags cape state park this is a nice natural area to walk around escape the city you really will feel like you're in uh, the everglades almost out here uh, lots of nature, plenty of iguanas I noticed, some birds. Another popular activity from Miami is going towards the Bahamas. It's actually quite close. It's about 110 miles away from Nassau, but uh, you can easily go to Bimini or Freeport. Uh, they have ferries that leave out of Fort Lauderdale or some other parts of Miami you can check on. Now while in Miami, you can also look into doing some dance lessons if you're interested. They have salsa dancing, flamenco, other types of Latino style dancing lessons can be had here. Now let's talk about the Sunny Isles. This is just north of Miami, south of Fort Lauderdale, kind of nearby Hollywood Beach, but again, a nice area for white sand beaches. And when it comes to local cuisine, you'll find plenty of Cuban sandwiches, other types of Cuban cuisine, lots of Italian foods. I found there to be plenty of Mexican options. I was always eating tacos in Miami. Some of the best burger restaurants are here as well getting some barbecue. So Miami's got a lot of Latin infusion with some Italian and Spanish style. Also, it's an international city, so you're gonna find plenty of other international cuisines, Indian and Asian foods. And that's a wrap from Miami. If you enjoyed this one, please watch our Bahamas travel guide or the Cayman Islands next. See you on the next one.